hello yes sir yes. okay so now guys let's start this so let's see what is azure uh, data engineering so guys when we talk about the azure data engineering the azure data engineering is nothing but it is okay uh, an end to end service which provides the solutions for the polling that means so what do you mean by first of all azure see basically azure is the name used by the microsoft okay guys so azure is the name used by the microsoft to market their cloud services okay so azure is the name used by the microsoft to market their cloud services whereas data is nothing but what guys data is nothing but information okay information or okay whatever it may be we call it information etc and then we have what's it engineering so engineering is nothing but application of techniques various techniques so now application of various techniques on the data okay guys application of various techniques on the data okay application of techniques various techniques on the data using the azure using the azure that is called as what azure data engineering that is called as what azure data engineering so guys azure is the name used by the microsoft and data is nothing but the information and engineering is nothing but the various techniques apply various techniques we apply it on the data so hence we call it as what azure data engineering azure data engineering so guys when we talk about the azure data engineering so azure data engineering is a end to end service which provides the following as a service what is that the first one we call it here as what is that guys the first one we call it here as what so okay the first one is called as what it's a bunch of cloud services it's a bunch of cloud services so azure data engineering is the bunch of cloud services is the bunch of cloud services various cloud services okay whereas using these cloud services we can perform the following task what are those the first one we call it here as the is guys data migration then we have data integration okay we have what is it data migration data migration then we have the data integration and uh, then we have what is it guys data migration data integration data migration data integration then we have what's that data summarization data migration data integration data summarization and as well as you have the data visualization we have the data visualization so guys you can say what's that data migration data integration data summarization and the data visualization so these are all the tasks these are all the jobs we can say we can perform it by using the azure data engineering that means using the azure data engineering guys we can perform the following what is that it can be <coughs> data migration data integration and then we have the data summarization and then we have the data visualization so these are all the things we can perform it okay so now guys let's try to understand what exactly the things we have it that means what is data migration what is data integration what is data summarization and what is data visualization wherein when we talk about the azure data engineering guys within the azure data engineering we have the following what is that the first one we call it as what guys the first one we call it as what's that adf 
that is called as what Azure Data Factory. That means the Azure Data Engineering is a bunch of the cloud services. It's the bunch of the cloud services where we have what is that? ADF is the first one that is called as Azure Data Factory. And the next one you have as what? ADB that we call it as Azure Databricks. Okay. Azure Databricks. And then we have the next service in this Synapse. And guys, the next service we have it in this. Okay. ADF, ADB, Synapse. And then we have what is that, guys? ADF, ADB, Synapse. Okay. And then we have what is that? Uh, Azure Fabric. Fabric is a newly introduced one. And then we have also, guys, OpenAI. What's that? Azure Open AI. Okay. So likewise, can you see here? Okay. So what's that? Azure Open AI. There is nothing but Open AI. Okay. So all these are nothing but again. Okay. All these are nothing but what? And again, we have what's that? Machine learning. Okay. Machine learning. These are all the services which we have it and which we are going to see. These are all the services which we have it and which we are going to see as a part of Azure Data Engineering, where the Azure Data Engineering is nothing but what, guys? It's a bunch of cloud services. It is a bunch of cloud services. It's a bunch of cloud services, okay? Where it uh, the following jobs we can perform the same by using the data migration. Okay, what is it? Data migration, data integration, data summarization, and data visualization. These are all the tasks we can perform it by using the Azure Data Engineering. Okay, guys. So now, what is this basically the data migration? What is this data integration, data summarization, and data visualization? What are all these? These are technical words now. But as a layman or a person who is not from an IT background, he cannot know or cannot identify all these things. Am I right? To know this, let's try to understand it in a proper way, guys. Okay, guys. So let's try to understand what are all this. So before we understand or before we discuss what is data migration, data integration, data summarization, and the data visualization. Let us try to discuss a few things. What are, what are those? Okay. So let's try to go ahead. Okay, guys, so let's try to understand all these. What are those? Okay, basically, what do, you, what, do you, what do you mean by what is meant by data migration? What is meant by data integration? What is data summarization and data visualization? Let's try to discuss all of it now. So before that, let's try to see, first of all, what is a cloud? What is a cloud and what is on-premises? What is cloud and what is on-premises? Okay. What is cloud and what is on-premises? You guys, so just a minute, one minute. Yeah, please tell me.
okay guys so let's try to guys let's say uh, uh let's try to go ahead okay so first of all let's try to understand what is a uh guys let's try to understand what is a cloud and what what is an on premises first of all what is a cloud and what is an on premises so guys before we go ahead so what first of all it is very essential for us <clears throat> yes it is very essential for us to know what is a cloud and what is on premises okay guys so let's try to understand first of all what is a cloud and what is an on premises okay what is a cloud and what is an on premises let's try to understand this okay so guys so cloud and what is on premises so to understand this cloud and on premises let us try to see a simple example guys you will understand it in a better way okay rather you will understand it in a better way we'll just take a normal example so everyone of us having the mobile phone am i right guys everyone please respond yes do everyone have a mobile yes yes sir Back. So whenever we buy the mobile phone, by default, whenever we buy a mobile phone, guys, by default, whenever we buy a mobile phone, every mobile phone, you will get it with a default inbuilt memory. Am I right? Inbuilt storage will be there in every mobile phone. Yes. Let us say whether you bought, a, okay, whether you buy a Samsung mobile or you buy an Apple mobile, whatever it may be. Let us say you buy, you bought a Samsung mobile phone and you got an uh, okay, 128 GB as the inbuilt memory of the inbuilt memory of the <clears throat> mobile phone, and at the same time, okay, uh, you got a RAM space. That means you got a RAM space, guys. RAM space in the mobile phone that is called as uh, 8 GB. That means what? what the, this is called as a configuration of your mobile phone. Am I right, everyone? This is called as a configuration of your mobile phone. Okay, guys. This is called as a configuration of mobile phone. So whenever you buy a mobile phone, by default, you will have the mobile, okay, uh, you know, uh, mobile with the inbuilt memory, mobile with the inbuilt memory of Yes, guys. Mo mobile inbuilt memory of what is that? Mobile inbuilt memory of uh, let us say a one twenty eight GB is the hard disk memory and eight GB is the RAM memory. You have it. But now, suppose you have been to a function or somewhere, okay, and where you have clicked some pictures and videos, and now through a camera, through a camera you have picked it. Now you have totally. 500 GB, totally how much data you have it? 500 GB of the photos and pictures are clicked by you. Can you store this 500 GB of the data in your mobile phone? Please tell me, guys. No, sir. No. Not at all possible. Why? Because it is out of memory. Your mobile phone memory is 128 GB only. But the memory or which the, the data which you have generated, it is called as what? 500 GB. So now, guys, it's not possible to store the data. So generally, what you do, the so generally is what? So generally, if the data is exceeding this one, if you want to store this, we can try another way. What is that? You can add an SD card, guys. That is called as a scan disk card. But if you if you add the with if you add add the scan disk card SD card, so you can increase. Let us say 128 GB is the mobile phone data memory plus 128 GB. Now, what is the total memory you have it, guys? Can you tell me? 128 plus 128? 256. 256, exactly. 256 GB. That means you can store the maximum data of 256, not beyond that now. Still, you have left out. That means still you have, what is that? Uh, out of uh, 500, you, can, you could able to store only uh, 256 but still you have to save the data so at that time there is no other alternative you have you got so you will buy a new so you will have to buy a new mobile phone but every time buying a new mobile phone just to save the data just to store the data it is really a cumbersome process and expensive process what i believe am i right 
So to avoid that, what is the alternative which use it? The alternative which use it is generally guys, okay. Generally we go to store the data into the Google Drive. Am I right? Google Drive. But there is a drawback again here. The default data in a Google Drive which we can store is how much guys? 15 GB. Am I right? But can you store 500 GB of the data in the Google Drive? In fact, not only 500, whatever the amount of data you want, you can store it into the Google Drive. But subject to which you have to pay the cost. 15 GB is free. 15 GB is what? Free. But you can store the data, the whole data you can store it. Guys. But the whole data you can store it. <clears throat> so guys, you can say that the Google Drive is a place, a Google Drive is a place where you can store the data at any point of time by paying the cost just by paying the cost you can store the data and this data guys you can buy story the by paying the cost you can store the data guys by paying the cost you can store the data whatever the amount of data you want you can store it just by paying the cost you can buy the storage all right whereas the storage okay obviously it will be for a period of time that is one year whatever it may be now guys why do we go for Google Drive rather than storing the data into the, uh, or let us say, what are the advantages and disadvantages? You have it by storing the data into the Google Drive. At the, time, uh, at the same time, what are the drawbacks you have it when you store the data into the mobile phone and as well as SD card, okay? So when you talk about the Google Drive, if you store the data into the Google Drive, everyone, if you store the data into the Google Drive, guys, if you store the data into the Google Drive, you can access the data from any part of the world. That means you don't require the physical device. Am I right? Do you require a mobile phone or a particular device or with any device you can access the data? Any device you can use it to access the data. That is called as what? Advantage of storing the data into the Google Drive. The second reason is what? You have created the data or stored the data in India. Tomorrow you left for US. Can you access the data in US? In fact, you can access the data without any hesitation. You can access the data. And the third reason, what is the third reason, guys? The third reason is that, yes, guys, the third reason is that, the third reason is that, guys, unlimited storage. There is no limit for storing the data. As much as data you want, you can store the data. Unlimited data. Okay, unlimited data. And now, security. When you talk about the security, the fourth reason, guys, security will be taken care of by the Google Drive. By the Google, not by you ultimately. Am I right? So these are some uh, drawbacks and advantages and disadvantages of the, uh, you know, uh, Google Drive and as well as the on-premises system. Whereas when you talk about the mobile phone, guys, when you talk about the mobile phone, uh, when you talk about the mobile phone, the mobile phone, everything is just like an on-premises system. Even the SD card we talk, okay, even the SD card where we have limited amount of storage and less feature of security security feature will not be there it will be it has to be taken care by the user itself whereas when we talk about the google drive the google drive is nothing but what's that guys this is the cloud data so hence what is the advantage you have it here you can store whatever the amount of data and irrespective of the location you can access the data as well okay without any hesitation so hence guys this is the thing we have it what is that here you have the following. What is that? Yes, guys. Here you have the following. Google Drive and the, that is nothing but the <clears throat> mobile phone. These are the two different type of data where Google Drive is called as the clouds and uh, uh, mobile phone and SD card is called as what? On-premises data. It is called as what, guys? On-premises data. That's it. Okay. So on-premises data. Now, the next one, guys. The next one after this. Okay. So when we talk about the, uh, that is nothing but <coughs> Google Drive or whenever we talk about the on-premises and the cloud data. The next one, guys. I hope everyone is clear with the what is on-premises and what is the cloud. Now, guys, let us try to see what is a data migration first. Guys, when we talk about the data migration, data migration is nothing but can you see here? Are you moving the data 
from the on premises system to the cloud or not yes yes, yes. yes. yeah whenever we move the data from the on premises system to the cloud whenever we <clears throat> whenever we move the data guys from the on premises system to the cloud this is called as what guys it is called as the process of what data migration it is called as a process of what data migration it is called as a process of what data migration okay so whenever we move the data from the on premises system to the cloud environment it is called as a process of what data <clears throat> migration it is called as a process of what data migration so whenever we move the data from the on premises system to the cloud whenever we move the data from the on premises system to the cloud this is called as a process of what data migration now guys what is a data integration let's start to understand what is data integration yeah please respond everyone so what is data integration okay and what is data summarization let's try to understand these two points now okay so guys so when we talk about the yeah please respond number somebody want to say something uh, okay so guys here you have observed data integration and data summarization so guys let's try to see an example here guys everyone okay let's see an example here okay everyone let's try to see an example here what is data integration and data summarization so let us see guys here you have <clears throat> everyone i'm taking up an example let us try to understand this with the help of an example with the help of an example so guys what are, what is that just a minutes Okay, guys. So, what is data integration and data summarization? Let's try to understand this with the help of example. Suppose, guys, there is a supermarket. There is a supermarket. What is that? There is a supermarket. So, when we okay, let's take an uh, okay. There, uh, suppose let's take a very simple example than that. Okay, let's try to understand with a very with the help of a very simple example, guys. Now, here, what is that you want, everyone? here what is that you want to hear is okay guys everyone let's try to understand this with the help of a very simple example okay so now guys uh, let's just say today you wanted to cook guys today you wanted to cook a veg curry guys you wanted to cook a veg curry today this is your task or this is your actually thing what you want to say that is today you want to cook a veg curry so guys whenever you wanted to cook a veg curry guys whenever you wanted to cook a veg curry okay whenever you wanted to cook a veg curry what is that you will do please respond guys so whenever you wanted to cook a veg curry so first of all buy vegetables yes exactly you will go to the uh, supermarket and buy the vegetables but suppose you have been to a uh, supermarket called reliance fresh Suppose you have been to the Reliance Fresh as a supermarket. Okay. So once you have been to the Reliance Fresh, let us say the following list of vegetables is there. That is nothing but let us say vegetable number one. <clears throat> and this is basically uh, the Reliance Fresh. Uh, they bought it from uh, Tamil Nadu. And Tamil Nadu is in India. In the same way, they bought the vegetable number two uh from okay uh telangana and a district of telangana you can say some district the next one and the third vegetable whatever uh, they have it 
they bought it uh, or they okay uh, arranged it from the uh, some other that is nothing but let us say jammu and kashmir j and k and this is also in india and then they have the next vegetable they bought it from the madhya pradesh and madhya pradesh is in also india and now guys the next vegetable <clears throat> uh okay from malaysia okay malaysia is a country separate country so again you have what's it uh okay uh, some other that is uh okay some vegetable they have they bought it or they imported it from the usa as well that's it so guys now these are all the things you have it that means these are all the vegetables you may have at the reliance fresh but guys here as these are all the vegetables you may have at the reliance fresh let us say totally uh, can you see it? You, the Reliance Fresh has some 100 vegetables. How many vegetables are there? 100 vegetables are there. Hmm? Totally, they have 100 vegetables. Totally, they have 100 vegetables. Yes, totally, they have 100 vegetables, let us say. And these 100 vegetables are bought or imported from various countries for the facilitation of the customers. That means to facilitate the customers. To facilitate the customers, guys, to facilitate the customers or the consumers, they imported it from the various locations and made it available under the one roof. That means this vegetables is cultivated and cropped at Tamil Nadu. But can you say cultivated and cropped at Tamil Nadu, guys? Cultivated and cropped at Tamil Nadu. And for sale, it has been imported to Hyderabad. In the same way, uh, in some of the district of Telangana, the vegetable is cultivated or you can say crop and they bought it for sale in uh, city of Telangana. In the same way, this vegetable is uh, cropped at Jammu and Kashmir, but for sale or for the facilitation of the consumers, it is brought it to Hyderabad for sale. Likewise, this is in <coughs> Malaysia, this crop in Malaysia and this is uh, Madhya Pradesh. And this is in US and etc. etc. These are all the vegetables. So that means the vegetables which are available in the Reliance Fresh are imported. In other words, I can say imported from various places and made it available. And made available, guys, and made available, imported from various places and made available under the one roof. Made available under the one roof. Am I right? For for what is that? For as per the requirement or facilitating the consumers. Who are the consumers, guys? We all are the consumers. Am I right or not? Yes. We are all the consumers or customers, whatever we call it. Okay. Consumers or customers, whatever we call it. That's not a problem. So now, guys, can you see here? So for the facilitation of the consumer, all these are bought. So now, so as these vegetables are cropped at different places and bought under the one roof. Can you see it? This process, can you call this process as integration process? In fact, integration also happens the same way. That means the vegetables are, that means here, if you talk about the data integration, guys, just to see, if you talk about the data integration, that means data will be generated and created at various, loca various locations. Getting this data and making it available to the consumer at particular location, that is called as the job of what is that, guys? Data integration. So here also you can say integration is nothing but the same process. Now, guys, let us go further. The vegetables are gathered at a place and now Reliance Fresh, everything is done now. Now, guys. Once you have been to the Reliance Fresh to buy the vegetables for cooking the veg curry, so are you going to buy all the 100 vegetables which are available or you are going to buy only those vegetables which is needed for cooking your curry? You will buy only those vegetables which is needed for cooking your curry. Am I right? You will buy only those vegetables which is needed for cooking your curry. So for that, what you will do, guys? Yes, for that, what you will do? 
so you will buy only those vegetables for which is needed for cooking the curry guys hmm. which is needed for cooking the curry so guys now here in this case when such is the situation that means whenever you want okay so what happens here whereas guys so you will buy you will choose only those vegetables which is required for cooking your curry so now what is that that is called as what guys selection of vegetables am i right it is called as what selection of vegetables selection of vegetables it is called as what guys selection of vegetables selection of vegetables that means you are choosing the vegetables as per the requirement let us say vegetable number 1 you will buy it vegetable number 3 <clears throat> vegetable number 5 and vegetable number 6 you bought it okay some vegetables you bought it okay that's it this is called as what selection of vegetables in the same way next one what is it you have it once you selected the vegetables and bought them home guys once you selected the vegetables and bought them home what you will do after getting them once you bought the vegetables home as soon as you bought them home you will start cooking or so you will start eating no because we don't as a human we don't eat the raw 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 food am i right so what is that what you will do you will continue the following process what is that you will start the process of what cleaning or washing comma cutting and chopping cleaning washing cutting and chopping am i right guys everyone and once it is done finally you will end up by using the cooking that's it that's it so after cooking what you will do once the cooking is done then you will perform the eating process whereas guys uh this is called as a selection of vegetables choosing the vegetables second one cutting chopping all this is called as what guys what this is called as can you call this process transformation of vegetables yes yes transformations of which in the same way guys in the same way this process you can call it as what eating is a process of what loading am i right loading <clears throat> the which that means ultimately eating so guys in the same way if you convert this just replace this with the data so here we it's called as what selection of data transformation of data and loading of the data that's the only thing that happens where technically we call it here as what selection of guys selection of uh guys selection of uh, vegetables or selection of vegetables is called as what extraction of data <clears throat> extraction of data then you have what said guys then you have the transformation of data transformation guys what is that transformation of data what is that transformation transformation of data that's it okay then the next one you have what is it guys finally you have what is it transformation of data and finally you have what loading of data guys loading of data so ultimately guys ultimately can you see here ultimately these are all the things we have got it transformation of data there is extraction of data transformation of data and loading of the data that's it guys okay so whereas this process is nothing but it is called as a process for what etl what is it etl wherein when you talk about the azure guys when you talk about the azure the azure or the data engineering we have it it supports etl and as well as it uses one more technique that is called as what elt guys that is called as extraction loading then transformation so these are the two different techniques we use it guys what is it etl and elt 
So the olden one is the ETL and the latest one is the ELT. So most of the, and there is nothing but uh, now companies or corporates are slowly executing the ELT as well now. Mm. Okay, than the ETL. <clears throat> Why? Because the ETL is an olden technique where we extract it first, then we transform it, then we load it. So here we extract and load. As per the requirement, we transform the data. That is the thing you have it in the ELT. Okay. So this is the process. This is the process you have it, guys. Okay. So whereas, okay, guys, whereas what are the things we have completed now? If we have completed what is data migration, what is data integration, and what is data summarization. Where in case here, this is summarization only. Using of ETL, guys, this whole process is called as what? Data summarization. It is called as a process of what? Data summarization. Okay. This is called as a process of what? Data summarization. Now, guys, now, guys, suppose you ate this vegetable curry. Now, you have given it to your friend as well. Two, three friends you have given the veg curry. So, after eating this veg curry, will they talk about the taste or not? Generally, human tendency, I'm, talk, I'm telling you. Yes, guys? Yes. Yes. We will talk about the taste. If it is, you know, the same curry, you know, like uh, three to four people ate it. So then what happens? They will talk about the taste. Am I right? Taste, talking about the taste is what? You know, expressing their opinion about the curry or not. Yes, guys? Expressing the curry. That is uh, expressing the view. Expressing the view uh, is nothing but uh, that is talking about the taste. Okay. Whereas finally, uh, overall, so they may give some drawbacks, etc. But finally, if all of them says that is two of them, three of them says, oh, anyways, the curry was good. So that means what? The curry is good. That is the decision, final decision. Am I right or not? So whereas to take that decision exactly, whenever your one friend talks with the another friend about the curry, about the vegetable curry here, so what happening there? Unknowingly, the curry is being compared. The curry is being compared. That means here also comparative study is being taken place. Whenever there is a comparative study takes place, that is called as what, guys? That is called as what? Analysis. It is called as what? Analysis. It is called as what? Analysis. So comparative study is nothing but called as what? Analysis. So whereas this analysis is nothing but the process of what? Data visualization. Data visualization is nothing but it is a process of what, guys? Data visualization is nothing but it is a process of what? Everyone? Data visualization is nothing but it is a process of what? Yes, guys? Data visualization is a process of what? Analysis of data. So here, the same process we perform it here. So that means here, guys, all these tasks, what is that? Data migration, data integration, data summarization, and as well as the data visualization. All these we perform it here in the Azure by using, guys, by using what's that? The following services. What are the services we have it, guys? ADF, ADB, Synapse, Fabric, Machine Learning, OpenAI, all these are the things. Okay, all these are the services we apply it to understand the same process okay guys so you, you can perform the same by using this one okay guys so this is the thing about the these are the things we have it about the as azure data engineering so hence you can say the azure data engineering is a complete end-to-end -end cloud service it's a complete end-to-end -end cloud service which provides the solution for the following and now guys as a part of our course we are going to see all these okay guys uh adf adb synapse uh, fabric and open AI. these are all the things we are going to see okay and uh, the duration is uh, obviously okay 90 days for azure data engineering or if you want only the adf the duration would be 45 days okay or even if you want simply adb okay uh, it will be uh, the same one month and odd. Okay. So guys, anyways, these are all the uh, things we have it, guys. 
the duration, everything. So every day you will have the class at nine o'clock and we'll continue nine to 10. That will be the standard timings for the classes. Okay. And uh, if you have any personal questions to know, uh, you can call me up on this number. Okay. This is my direct number, guys. If you have any queries, any this thing, you can just, okay, uh, uh, you know, uh, you can just uh, let me know on this, okay. And uh, even, okay, let me know on this. Okay, guys, so that's it about the day. If you have any questions, please go ahead and ask everyone. So, Samir, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Samir, are you covering Synapse, Fabric, OpenA and ML2? Yes, of course. See, but uh, the Fabric, OpenAI and ML, I'll give you the basic process, not in detail. Up uh -huh. to Synapse, ADF, ADB and Synapse, I'll cover you. The whole thing in detail. Okay, what about PySpark? Yeah. PySpark is a part of ADB only. So we are but seeing... But that is also it's required, right? Yeah. That is also it's required, right? You need to teach the... 100%. 100% it's required. 100% is required. What are all the things you require it? That we will see it as a part of our, you know, uh, this course itself. And if you want the particular, you know, uh, the PySpark and all, um, I have uh, videos. So I will give you the access to that video. So you can go particularly... I have prepared these videos only for this purpose. So where you can just go through those videos, we'll get the basic idea. That means when you talk about the very basics of the PySpark, okay? Because anyways, okay. we are using it as a technical this thing. If you want it at a very basic level, then I have some videos. So that videos, I will share it with you guys. So you can just go through that one. Okay. Uh, yeah, please go ahead. So, so some the class consists of uh, theoretical part and practical also, right? Obviously, or... most of the things will be practical. This is not a theory, no. Just practically implementing, you know, we have to implement the same. Practically implement the same. So, hence, uh, it's more practically than being theoretical. But I will give you notes as well. Don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. So how how you are segregating? How many days you are segregating for each each section? Generally, it is thirty. Uh, there is forty five, forty five, and rest of the uh twenty days to twenty five days. So no, all this, including pipe and pi spark and uh, Scala. Pi spark as a yeah, pi pi spark is a part of ADB. We use it. Okay, pi spark is nothing but basically the combination of Python and Spark. So that we, yeah, that, that we see it when you see the ADB. Okay. Okay. So when you talk about the very basics of PySpark, okay, uh, that for that I have the video so I can share it with you guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, any job uh, placement assistance and... Uh... Assistance in the sense, I'll help you out in resume planning or uh, in this type of thing. But there is assistance in the sense, there is uh, no other way I can support it except these are the things how we can go on a right path that I can suggest. And certifications? Uh... Ah, you can go with the DP203 soon after this course is completed. So mm -hmm. that level you will get the knowledge so you can take up this, this sort of problem. So is the only timing available 9, 9 a.m. IST? Yeah, 9 a.m. IST is the current timing available right now. And uh, yeah, this is the only timing right now we have it. Okay. Hello, sir. Did we answer the slide? Yeah, yeah. Please, please tell me. So basically, I need to know in data breaks, like, uh, are we going to uh, learn like, uh, a, uh, sorry, uh, Delta Life Table, Auto Loader, Unity Catalog, that thing as well? Obviously, no. Uh, Delta Life Table, these are the very important things which you require to know. Mm -hmm. 
and so, streaming data as well yeah streaming data okay live streaming data mm -hmm. uh, okay so these are all very important uh, you know things we should know it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. so like uh, like we are uh, using adf as well as a database so uh, we will uh, create like that cluster part from adf or directly from database uh, actually, this ADF or ADB, whatever we create it or we to use it, that is mm -hmm. from the same portal. Okay. okay. It is portal.azure.com. Okay. So okay. you can use this way or you have a separate community edition is also there. Mm -hmm. Even if you use the community edition, it will route it back to the portal.azure.com. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. Everything we will see practically, nothing will be theory theoretical on this. Okay. Okay. Uh, sir, and one thing more, like uh, as we are including ADF as well as the synapse. Hmm. So uh, both pipelines we are going to look at, like as majorly both. Yes, are... yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Both the pipelines. Okay. Okay. How does the pipeline works in synapse and how does the pipeline works in ADF? Okay. Uh, and sir, like in the codes, there was written like uh, basic, like HD inside or something like that is also written, I think. Yes. So, so that thing we are going to see as well? Obviously, whatever the things are covered, uh -huh. uh, even that is, you know, more than that will be covered. I mean, not worry on that. Oh, okay, sure. Sir. Thank you. So any other questions, guys? So that's it. And Samir, are you sharing the classes and uh, recordings, right? Notes or notes? Recordings and will be given every day on a daily basis. You'll get the recordings. Okay. Hi, Samir. Hi, hi. Please tell me. Uh, sir, uh, we are going to see any project end to end. Yes, project two. I'll I'll show you two projects. Okay, I will show you two projects on this. Uh, the whole intern implementation of the project I'll show you. Yeah. So, any other questions, guys? So, that's it. Thank you, everyone, for attending. So, we'll just continue tomorrow at the same time, guys. Uh, tomorrow, we'll have the class at same. That is 9 o'clock. Thank you, everyone. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Or if you have any doubt, you can just call me directly. No problem. Anytime you can call me, guys. This is my direct number. You can call me up, okay? Yeah. Thank you.